Hi there, DW Berman here, and I just want to go over the new uh, anti-aliasing settings for LightWave 11. Uh, this is the new unified sampling setup that uh, is being touted. It'll save you a ton of time in your renders if you did not um, optimize your samples in the previous version of LightWave. Um, first of all, all of our uh, anti-aliasing settings and shading quality settings are here in the Render Globals tab, or Render Globals panel, which is, you know, over here it's Control-P now for the uh, keyboard shortcut. We have the Render tab, and we have the Cameras setting. Our uh, camera setting here, we have a Minimum Samples, a Maximum Samples, Adaptive Sampling, and the Threshold, and that those are pretty much our, uh, our key camera uh, settings for anti-aliasing. Uh, we have our render tab over here. We have shading samples and light samples. What shading samples is, that's like if you're using uh, an occlusion node or you're doing a reflection blurring or refraction blurring, where it's something where in Lightwave 9 you had your separate controls. Uh, let me go over here. I'm in Lightwave 9 here. If I go to my surface editor and I go to my cube, you can see I have an occlusion node plugged in here. And I have a samples setting. That is, you know, how many points does the renderer look at when it's looking to render that shader? And the lower that number is, the grainier your image will be. And if you look on the environment tab in the surface editor in Lightwave 9, you have a reflection sample and a refraction sample. And um, since I'm over here, I'll show you in uh, you, our light properties has a quality setting. This is the quality of the shadow, how grainy our shadow is, and the camera properties we have anti-aliasing and adaptive sampling and threshold. Um, and just by way of comparison, I'm going to hit F9 with our uh, anti-aliasing set to 1 and our adaptive sampling turned on with the threshold set to 01. And you'll see uh, it renders it at the anti-aliasing setting of 1, so it's kind of grainy, and then it... Uh, starts looking at which parts of the image need to be smoothed out more and then it starts tackling those and every single uh, adaptive sampling pass takes a progressively longer amount of time because it's doubling the number of samples being taken so at the end of your render here it could take quite a bit of time because it's throwing an exponential number of samples it's throwing millions of samples at it depending on your quality settings um, but enough of that so in Lightwave 11, with the exact same settings, our uh, lights and stuff are set to their defaults, and our minimum maximum, our minimum uh, samples here, which is equal to the anti-aliasing setting in uh, Lightwave 9, they're both set to 1, and our adaptive sampling is turned on, and our threshold is set to 01. Remember, it was smoothing it out, but it was taking longer and longer to each pass. Now when I hit F9, it renders instantly and it's not smoothed out at all. Well what's changed is in Lightwave 9 and 10 if you have an adaptive sampling turned on Lightwave would automatically change the number of samples for each successive adaptive sampling pass. Now I can set that number manually. So now I can limit how long it takes for each adaptive sampling pass to take and this number here will ultimately give me uh, maximum number of samples that can be used in our scene. I know I'm just reading what it says on the interface so it's you know not rocket science really it's just confusing because our settings are different. Okay let's let's look at how these different uh, pieces interact. Let me set my minimum samples to one and my maximum samples to one and my shading samples to one and my light samples to one and now I basically have no uh, no shading going on. No no anti-aliasing happening at all anywhere in the program. So you can see our shadows look really rough and our shading on our cube looks really rough. And of course, you know, our edges are jaggy, but the image is so noisy we can't even tell how jaggy our images are. So let me change my lighting samples or my shading samples to eight. And I'll just hit render so you can see what that looks like. It's grainy, but it's much better than it was. You can actually see what's going on now. Let me change my light samples to eight. And these are the default settings when these are set to 8. You can see it looks pretty decent. I mean, it's grainy, but it's pretty decent. Um, 
just notice the level of graininess that there is right now. I'm going to change these settings back to 1. Remember that looked terrible. I'm going to change my maximum samples to 8. And what it's doing now is it's going through the adaptive sampling process and it's bringing all of those noisy areas up to a sample setting of 8. You know, making sure it's sampled to 8 times. So that looks pretty similar to what we had here, only now our edges are smooth. So this is our light quality setting, my light sh samples set to 8, and my surface shader setting set to 8. And this is my scene with the light sample set to 1, and the shading sample set to 1, but the maximum samples is set to 8. I'm going to change my maximum samples back to 1, and I'm going to set my minimum samples to 8. And you'll see it's pretty much the same. This image looks the same as that image, and that image looks pretty close to this image, except now our, with our, without the camera samples set, our edges are jaggy. So basically the upshot is you don't necessarily need to have uh, your quality settings on our shading samples and our light samples set very high at all. You can leave them set to 1 even, or you might want to set them higher uh, to 2 or 3, but you don't really need them at 8 unless you run into a particular instance where your everything else looks great, but your shadow quality is just not up to, just just not matching, or your the shading on your surface is noisy, but everything else looks great. So uh, otherwise you can just leave those set pretty low. There's a lot more you can l learn about this stuff. Um, Rebel Hill did a great video on it, and uh, Jen uh, had a great lecture on it at the uh, LA Lightwave user group meeting. I encourage you to watch both of those videos. There's some overlapping content and they're kind of long, but there's good information that you really should understand about this whole setup. And uh, I hope you have a great day and I hope you found this useful.